coming to safety how can you define safety all these are very simple basic definitions that we know already right safety we can say that it is nothing but state of being safe that is called safety or in other words we can define that it is nothing but the state of being protected from danger or harm we must be protected from any danger and harm that is called as safety okay and uh, what may be safe enough for one person it may not be for others we all must agree with this right <clears throat> something that is that uh, that is safe for a particular person it may not be the same for the others others may may feel the same thing to be an unsafe action for example if you take uh, you assume that an uh, uh, having a knife in the clay, uh, hands of an um, kid is it that safe it's not safe right giving knife in hands of kids but the same knife if it is in hands of any adult it is safe so we cannot describe this concept of safety completely because what may be safe for one person it may not be safe for others we can also give examples other examples related to this if suppose assume that an electrician is working on or attending some minor faults in our uh, home he will be attending he will be opening the switchboard opening the that is uh, switches wires everything he will handle without even switching off the mains right he feel that it is safe to him he know how to do it right so that is safe for him whereas we cannot handle the same we cannot attend the same fault as an electrician does so we cannot describe this concept of safety completely the reason is given here for one person it may be safe safe the same thing or same action cannot be or may not be safe for others and the definition of safety is given in american heritage dictionary like this it is nothing but freedom from damage injury or risk that is called safety we must be free of damage we must be free of injury or risk this is the definition given in american heritage dictionary and uh, this also we must agree we all should agree is it possible if you ask a question like is it possible to provide safety or ensure safety of every individual or a group of individual at, under all conditions definitely we cannot provide absolute safety it is neither attainable nor affordable so all these are the basic definitions of what is safety we must be free from protect that is we must be protected from any danger and harm that is called as safety now this safety it must be an integral part of any engineering design the first and the foremost duty of engineer is what you always must keep this in mind the first and foremost duty is you have to ensure the safety of the people those who are using the product that is being designed by you that is the first duty that we have to follow so it is an integral this safety is an integral part of any engineering design and uh, this person william lawrence he defined safety like this which is given here as a thing is safe any action or any product or any design it can be anything a thing a thing is safe if its risks are justified to be acceptable what do you mean by this if the risk of using a thing is justified judged to be acceptable then that particular thing use of that particular thing is safe so according to him a design or a thing is said to be safe for a person who judges the perceived risk is less see safety the concept of safety uh, it depends on the perspectives of a person how a person perceives it how how he judges what he judges about using a thing what is his judgment about using a thing if a particular person judges that use of a particular thing is safe to him if he, if his perception is like that then 
that product is safe for that person. That is the uh, definition of safety according to William Lawrence. A thing is safe if its risks are justified to be acceptable. So in short, we can define safety as acceptable risk. If a person, everything depends on the person's judgment. If a person judges a use of particular product is safe, then it is safe. If he judges that it is unsafe, he will not use it. So it, everything, it, it, it depends on the human's perspective. Is it clear? What is the definition of safety according to William Lawrence? <clears throat> if he judges the perceived risk is less, then it is safe. If he judges the perceived risk is more or high, then it is unsafe. Okay, but unfortunately, this definition of safety of uh, Lawrence, it has the, some drawbacks like underestimation of risks, overestimation of risk, and no estimation of risk. Now, so far, till you understand what is safety, see, this is very simple, right? State of being safe is called safety. And uh, a person, it is, it is completely based on the person's perception. How he views about the safety of the product. Is it clear or not? Can anyone reply? It's clear, ma'am. Yes. So what are the drawbacks in the definition of Lawrence's underestimation of risk? What do you mean by this underestimation of risk? See, an unsafe product, an unsafe product because of the misjudgment of a person. Because as per Lawrence, it's based on, it's purely based on the judgment of a person. Whether a thing is safe or not, it, uh, it is based on the judgment of a person. So because of a misjudgment of a person, an unsafe product may also be considered to be a safe product. This is called underestimation. We are underestimating the risk involved in it. For example, uh, let us assume that a person buys an improperly designed coil type water heater. It has some fault in it. Okay. And he has uh, brought it, uh, judging that it is safe to him. Now, since it is improperly designed, definitely one day or the other, it is going to provide a heavy electric. It, it is going to result in a heavy electric shock. Right now, in this example, now uh, this judgment of the product uh, that is, judgment of the person about the product has failed. Right, he has uh, failed to judge it properly. He has bought an he has brought an imp uh, improperly designed water heater, assuming and judging that it is safe to him. So this is against Lawrence definition. His judgment is failed. So this is one of the drawback. Underestimation of risks may happen if we follow blindly the definition of Lawrence. Okay. Next is overestimation of risk. What do you mean by overestimation? Sometimes uh, the risk involved in using a product may be comparatively very less. But if a person is... Uh, over safety conscious then to him it may seem to be a highly risk or highly unsafe thing to use so if the products risk is comparatively less and if a person judges it to be an unsafe thing for him to use it then it comes under overestimation of risk actually it is risk free the product is risk free but due to the over safety conscious of a person, he may assume that he may judge that using that particular product is unsafe to him. Now, this is also against Lawrence definition. A very simple example uh, is that uh, we can, uh, that is one person, if he thinks that adding fluoride or chlorine to a water will kill a lot of people. Is it so? It's completely risk free, right? Adding fluoride or chlorine to water. But due to his over safety conscious, if he judges the moment that he judges the risks are unacceptable, it should, we should not add fluoride or chlorine to water. The moment he judges like that, now water itself has become unsafe. This is called overestimation. So it is also against Lawrence definition. 
This is called overestimation of risks. Third is called no estimation. That is, the person is not, he doesn't want to judge about the product, about the safety of a product. For him, the product can be either safe or it can be unsafe. So all these three, uh, three uh, drawbacks may occur because of this definition of Lawrence, because he says that safety is, he defines safety, depends completely based on human's judgment, human's perspective about taking that uh, risk. So because of this statement of or definition of safety by Lawrence, we have these three drawbacks. Either we can underestimate the risks by our judgment and our judgment may fail in this case, or we may overestimate the risks or we cannot estimate. That is, we are not least bothered. We are uh, not interested in estimating the risk. It can be either unsafe or a safe thing. Okay. And to overcome this drawback, the same person, Lawrence, he modified the statement of definition of safety slightly, and he has given the definition like this. This is called modified version of Lawrence, definition about safety. And in the previous case, he, has, uh, he didn't include this word called to a certain degree. Always a thing is safe if it is perceived, if the perceived risks are adjustable are acceptable. That is the definition given by uh, Lawrence in the previous definition, previous case. Now, because of the drawbacks involved, he modified it slightly and he gave the definition like this. And he has given the definition like this, which is a thing is safe to a certain degree. It's not completely safe. It is to, uh, safe to a certain degree with respect to a given person or a group. It can be with respect to a given person or a group can judge on it, judge about the safety of using a product. At a given time, if its risks were fully known and if those risks would be judged acceptable to, to a certain degree. So this is the modified definition of safety given by Lawrence. He, he, he is not saying that a thing is completely safe if the risks are judged to be acceptable. Instead, he's including that uh, term called to a certain degree. A thing is safe to a certain degree with respect to a given person or a group at a given time if the risks involved in it are judged to be acceptable to a certain degree. This is the modified version. Okay. Now let us see the criteria to ensure a safe design. If we want to design a product, we have to ensure the safety of designing a product. What are the criteria that has to be met? Okay. The first thing is any dis design, it should comply with the legal standard for safety. Government has been uh, given some standards, some laws might have been framed by the government in designing a product, whether it is safe or not, right? So with respect to safety, the design should comply with all legal standards of laws. Second thing is any accepted design should meet the standards of accepted engineering practice. Even in engineering design also, there must be some criteria to be met for any design, right? Mm -hmm. It should not go beyond this or it should not be less than this. It should be within this threshold level, the design or the output voltage, whatever it may be, what uh, that is involved, whatever the parameter that is involved in our design. It should always meet the standards of accepted engineering practice. For example, uh, while making a concrete mixture, the ratio of cement and mud, it should be only in this ratio. Like this, some engineering um, design standards will also be available, right? So we have to ensure that our design, the design that we make, it meets the standards of accepted engineering practice. Okay. And the third point or third criteria that we have to ensure is we must always think of alternate designs that are potentially safer. We must explore in that way also. We are designing a product and we are uh, looking into the safety, uh, incorporating safety measures into the product that we design. 
so while doing so we have we might have explored and we might have incorporated few safety measures into our product but always we have to think of is there any other alternate method or alternate design that is potentially safer than what we have made that also should be explored in order to ensure safe design okay and all possible misuses of the product by the customer should be identified and the identified problem should be avoided the product that we, uh, we we have incorporated safety concepts into our product and once it is into the market the customer those who are buying it they may misuse the product and uh, if, if the product is misused definitely uh, at one particular point of time it will not be a safe right so that in that view also we have to think what are the possible misuses of a product by a customer that should be explored by us that should be in that way also we have to think and we have to come out with the solutions for that problems also last criteria is the designed product should be tested using the prototypes okay initially we have to start with the design then we will be make uh, we will be forming a prototype and then only we will be uh, converting it into a complete final product is it not so in the prototype stage itself we have to design we have to test the complete product whether it meets the specification the test should not be limited to whether uh, the product or prototype is meeting the specification or not in addition to that we also have to test the product for safety whether it is safe to use in that way also we have to test okay so these are the criteria that we have to ensure to a safe design <clears throat> next how how to incorporate safety in engineering design what are the steps that we have to follow for incorporating safety in engineering design it was given by allen d wilcox and the steps are summarized here if you want to design a safe product then the first thing is we have to define the problem what are the safety issues that may occur while using the product that is what defining the problem here it is related to the safety issues we have to list out the risk factors involved in using the product what are the safety issues that may occur or arise when customers are using the particular product so first point is we have to define the problem and once we listed out the risk factors involved then we have to come out with multiple alternate design solutions to overcome all the risk factors to overcome all the safety issues we have to work on the solution to bring out or to reduce the risk factors so second step is we have to generate multiple alternate design solutions now after we get different design solutions for a particular safety issue it is not that we have to uh, find only one solution for find solving a particular safety issue we, we have to work on multiple design solutions okay now once all the multiple solutions has been obtained then we have to analyze each solution we cannot pick randomly one solution out of which we have developed okay we have to analyze each design solution then test the solutions after testing the solutions we have to select the best and we have to incorporate that solution to solve a particular safety issue in using a product and they, they have to implement that particular solution chosen solution to incorporate safety into a product so these are the design steps that we have to follow while incorporating safety into a product or into an engineering design we have to analyze all the risk factors all the safety is, uh, issues that may happen while using a product so we have to list it down and for each and every safety issue that we have listed we have to generate multiple solutions once the solutions are obtained we have to analyze it test the solutions and select the best one and after selecting the best we have to implement the chosen solution this is how we have to go with the design okay next is let us see what is risk safety and risk are interrelated right 
safety itself can be defined as it is nothing but acceptable risk if the risk is acceptable risk involved in using a product is acceptable then it is safe to use that is the definition of safety so both are interrelated safety and risk are interrelated now having seen the basic definitions of safety now let us move on to risk what is risk and learn what uh, what is the actual definition of risk and how to perform risk analysis all these okay now uh, in general very basically if you want to define risk it is nothing but it's a potential that something unwanted and harmful may occur that is called as risk some da da danger or harm it may occur that is called as risk so you can say it is the possibility of suffering harm or loss okay and uh, if risk factors are involved in using a product it will affect our physical as well as economic well being actually there are three well beings one is physical psychological and economic and this risk if uh, risk is involved in using a product then definitely it it will affect the physical well being as well as economic well being okay it may result in some it may lead to some severe accidents which causes bodily harm and also it may cause some economic loss in addition to economic loss see because uh, uh, we we might have thought that uh, we shall design a particular product and once it is been into the market the economy of the country may grow but unfortunately because of risk factors involved in it if that aim or that objective has not been met then definitely it will result in economic loss okay so it may also produce da uh, dangers to bodily harm that is accidents it affects physical well being of a human being it also produce economic loss of a society and at times it will also lead to environmental disasters or you can say environmental degradation a faulty chemical plant if it is designed if a if chemical plant is designed faulty what happens it uh, one day or the other it may result in it may uh, that is it may result in some accident it may lead to some accident which results in physical which affects the physical well being of a human being or employees who are involved uh, or who are working in the chemical plant so it affects in this way it affects the physical well being and also if since it is a chemical plant if the wastes are not properly disposed it will also result in environmental degradation so these are the effects of risk and why this risk occurs what are the causes for risks one is delayed job completion what do you mean by this delayed job completion why this delayed job completion results in risks how it produces risk can anyone justify this how this delayed job completion produces risk one of you can you come out with the justification of this cause of risk why this delayed job completion results <coughs> in risk yes just think and say ma'am suppose uh... a customer has an ordered uh, for something material ma'am mm. for some product mm. where the engineer has to be uh, or manufacturer has to be uh, designed it within a before a deadline ma'am mm. suppose he, if he fail to meet the deadline the customer cannot able to take that product ma'am okay even after completing the uh, the product after the deadline there is no use ma'am 
Yes, because time to market plays an important role. Within two mm -hmm. months, if it has to be, if it has to reach market, then definitely it has to, uh, that is the, we have to stick on time. Otherwise, some other competitor may design the same product and they may be the first to release that product into the market and they will grab all the op, um, economy or money or profit, whatever we can say. This is called, this is the risk that occurs because of, so it results in economic, uh, economic loss. And also we can ju justify it in other way also, delayed job completion. If suppose the same example we can take. If suppose a customer that is a, a customer is asking for a com completion of a product within two months and uh, the engineer who is working on that particular product, he let us assume that he has wasted one month in some other um, job and uh, so working on some other projects. And uh, instead of taking two months of time, if he's going to take only one month of time in designing that particular product and he is finishing, finishing everything within this one month. Definitely, he may miss out some of the uh, design factors or he may fail to test that particular product because he, he will be in a hurry to complete the product within that one month period of time. Actually, he has to take two months to complete it, but he is taking only one month period of time to complete that particular product in which he may fail to test the safety about the product. He may fail to analyze about all the safety issues related to that particular product. This may result in or this may affect this particular type of risk this may this this will also result in risk right and this may affect the physical well-being of the person who is using the product so this is one of the cause for risk to occur delayed job completion and making faulty products also third is injurious solutions to technical problems so these are few causes of risks <clears throat> So the same person, William Lawrence, he defined uh, risk also, risk factor. How he defined, uh, how he has given the definition for risk is, it is a compound measure of probability and magnitude of adverse effect. Okay. It's a measure of how frequently it occurs, how frequently the risk is going to happen. That is called probability, measure of probability of occurrence of risk and how big it is going to be. What is the effect that is going to that it, it is going to produce, whether it is going to be a big loss or a very small loss, severe loss, medium loss. That is that, that speaks about this magnitude. That is what is the definition for risk according to Lawrence. So it is a measure of probability of occurrence of risk. And how big is going to be the effect of it, the magnitude of adverse effect, the product of, it is given here as a formula. Risk is nothing but product of occurrence into consequence in magnitude. What is its consequence? Whether it is going to be a big consequence or less, its consequence is going to be very minimum. So the product of the probability of occurrence of risk and its effect and its consequence in magnitude is called as risk. And we can define probability of safety to be one minus probability of risk. Okay, so this is the actual definition of risk. It's a measure of probability of occurrence of risk and the consequence of <coughs> adverse effect in magnitude.